Alrighty guys, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting now. We kind of already have this in our table of contents. We are going to go back to example one here and talk about those. But let's actually add to our notebook here and do page 73. So if you just turn the page, page 73 right here, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting. And then I have another one for you today where we are going to cut this one completely in half. Oh, I should have looked at this first. Shoot, can I figure this out? I think I can. Um, we want our operations. So we want any radicands multiply at the bottom of our first one. Hmm. Then I think we want unlike above that. <laughs> I should have looked at this first. If we flip it over, it makes sense, but does it still? Yes. Okay. So that's how we want it. So any radicands on bottom, unlike on top of that. And then right above these problems here, we want to fold in half so that our other two headings appear. And then we're going to want to staple in it so that they stay together. Um, and then I'm going to leave a little space at the top here just because we're going to write a little bit about that. Okay, so I may have said this to you guys in the past, but multiplication and division are very open. You can multiply and divide almost whatever you want. Now, with radicals, there's a slight restriction. You can only multiply and divide um, the same type of root, so both square roots or both cube roots and things like that. But in general, addition and subtraction is even more restrictive. You can't add or subtract anything you want. You can only add and subtract like terms. So the same goes for radicals. Not only does it have the restriction that when we're adding and subtracting, um, we have to have this same index, so same root, like both square roots, both cube roots, but you also have to have the exact same inside number or radicand. So same index and same inside number or radicand. Now that might seem like really hard to do and kind of sometimes, but the thing, and, and you're not just like off the hook necessarily if it doesn't work out this way and like you just can't simplify because we always have to be careful to see if I can simplify first. So if you don't have the same index, same inside number, you really should be asking yourself, can I simplify first? So we always want to be dealing with the simplest radical and then ask ourselves the question, do I have the same index, same inside number? Okay, so it's a little bit more restrictive, which is like good and bad. It makes me have to do less problems because if they don't match up perfectly, I kind of can't do it, but it can be hard when things are that restrictive. So let's open this up and try a couple, and then we'll go back and try the other ones from yesterday. So um, when our radicands are alike or are the same, we simply add or subtract the front numbers. So it's kind of like an X. Like if I'm doing 3X plus 2X, I just say 5X, okay? Same thing when I got a root around it. If my roots are the same, I just add the front numbers. So 5 root X. If I'm subtracting, then I just subtract the front numbers. And 3 minus 2 is 1 root X. And you can put the 1 or not. I'm going to put the 1 for now. But normally I will not put the ones just because I'm lazy. Okay, so as long as our root is the same and our inside number is the same, you're good to go. So something like this is pretty easy because all of my roots are root 5. And so I kind of am like, okay, they're all like terms. We just do the front numbers. So 6 plus 2 is 8 minus 1 is 7 root 5. 
With this next one, I can combine some of them. So this is a root 2 and that's a root 2. And so 7 minus 6 is 1 root 2. And then I have root 11s. And we have 8 here minus 4 there, so plus 4 root 11s. Now these are not alike, and so you'll just stop there. Um, similarly here, I have some that are alike. So we can do 8 minus 3 for negative 5 root 5. But this negative 2 root 7 doesn't have anybody, so he's just chilling. Okay. I should have mentioned too that we want to make sure our roots are as simple as they can be. But like 5, 2, 11, and 7, those are all prime numbers. So we weren't able to like square root them anymore. Now looking at this next one, we have unlike radicands, but we might still be able to simplify. So it's not as easy as just being like, oop, they're not the same, so I can't do anything. Like 18 and 8 are pretty big. You might be able to birthday cake those and simplify. Like the way that I think about 18 is really 9 times 2. And so when I square root this, a 3 comes out, but there's already a 3 out. So like another 3 coming out means we're going to multiply it. So 9 root 2, because all the things here are smushed together, that means multiply. The root 8, I know I can break up into 4 times 2. And when I square root the 4, it is 2. So that comes out and gets multiplied with the 5. So 10 root 2. And look at that. Now our roots are the same. We are both root 2s. So we're going to add these coefficients for 19 root 2. Same idea here. We want to break up our um, roots because these roots are pretty big. So I think 4 and 5 will work here. And kind of the cheaty thing too, guys, is like chances are they want me to add or subtract. Like looking at this one here, I know I'm going to be able to square root the 4. I'm going to times it by the other 2 that's out there and be left with a 5. If this root is a 5, chances are I'm going to be left with a 5 here. So if I think about 5 times something is 45, that's 9, and 9 is square rootable. So it's kind of a little bit of a cheaty way to simplify more quickly. Okay, so we we'll square root the 9, and we'll times this guy by 3. So we'll have 4 root 5 minus 15 root 5. And now we're both root 5, so we just subtract our coefficients for negative 11 root 5. Okay, you can do it with three numbers too. We're going to try our little cheaty method. Like looking at the 27, 12, and 75, I'm going to start with 12 because 12 is the easiest. And I know that I can do 4 times 3. Now, knowing that the 4 is coming out and the 3 is staying in, now I come over to the 27 and I'm like, okay, 3 times what? Oh, 3 times 9, and 9 is real good. Then I do it with the 75, and I'm like, okay, 3 times what? 25, and that's real good. So I can kind of do this cheaty thing where I know the number that's going to be left in the root um, because they probably want me to add. Alrighty, so here we square root and 3 gets multiplied. So 18 root 3. Here we square root and it's 2. So 2 gets multiplied. So negative 16 root 3. Here I square root for 5 and it gets multiplied. So plus 10 root 3. Now we're all root 3s. So we can combine them all up. So like 18 minus 16 is 2. Plus 10 is 12 root 3s. Okay, last but not least, truly for me, the 50 is the easiest because I just like have 50 in my brain for whatever reason. That's 25 times 2, and the 2 will be left in the root, and so I'm like, okay, 2 times what is 90? 45. Huh, that's not square rootable. That's a bummer. So I got to change this. 9 times 10, I guess. Because 9 is square rootable, and 10 is just 2 and 5, so I can't do it. The 32, though, maybe if I go back to my 2, 2 times 16, I think. Yeah. So I guess this middle number is just going to be the odd man out. 
I can simplify it, but I can't simplify it down to a 2. And that's okay. We might not be able to add all of them. So square root of 16 will get multiplied out here. Square root of 9 and square root of 25. So we'll have 12 root 2 plus 9 root 10 minus 20 root 2. So then, oh, I was almost going to add that 9. That would have been terrible. Only these are the ones that I can combine. So 12 minus 20 is negative 8 root 2 plus 9 root 10. Now, we can kind of combine the two things and add and multiply. There's a really clever way we can do this using a thing that we use often where we distribute or maybe FOIL. Because when I distribute or FOIL, like I'm multiplying, but I'm also maybe adding. So looking at this one here, we are going to multiply the root 6 by each of these we're distributing. And so we want to think about, okay, I got to multiply inside numbers. The outside numbers here are 1 and 3, so that, like, that's just 3. But then we got root 12 plus. Outside numbers are going to be 1 and 5, so just 5, but then 6 times 15, which is real big. What is that? 90? Yeah. Now, looking at these right away, like I don't think I can simplify, but maybe I, like I can't add, but maybe I can reduce them. So like 4 times 3. And then 9 times 10, that's stinking. So I don't think I'm going to be able to. We should still simplify, so like I am going to take the 2 out and multiply it for 6 root 3. Uh, and I am going to take the 9 out and multiply it for 15 root 10. But I still can't add those. So that's kind of a bummer. What can you do? All right, let's try distributing here. So we want to do 2 times 4. And then 3 times 2. And then here we want to do the 2 times the 2. And then the 3 times the 6. Now a 6 I don't think I can break up. Like that's just 3 and 2. But the 18 I can. That's 9 and 2. So I will break that up and bring the 3 out. But I still don't think I'm going to be able to add these. What a bummer. Minus 12 root 2. Because they're not the same root. Okay, last one we have here. If we're going to find the area of a rectangle, area of a rectangle is base times height. So we are doing 5 root 3 plus 7 root 5 times 4 root 6 minus 2 root 10. Which, since I'm doing two numbers by two numbers, is really FOIL. So we're going to do first times first. So outside numbers. And then inside numbers. Then we're going to do outer. So outside numbers. Inside numbers. Then we're going to do inner. Outside numbers. Inside numbers. And then we're going to do last. Outside numbers. And inside numbers. It's a lot. And it's a lot to keep track of because outside's got to go with outside, inside's got to, and you got to foil at the same time. And now we have to simplify. It's like the 18, I know I can do 9 times 2. The 30, I don't think I can do because 30 is just 6 times 5, 2 times 15, and 3 times 10. Like none of those are, like we could birthday cake it, but I really think it's pointless. Oh, but I do have these like terms right here. These are 30s. Oh, my goodness. Now the 50, I can also do 25 times 2. Okay, so these will simplify to the same thing also. Yay. Okay, so here we can combine. They're both root 30s. So that is 18 root 30. Here when I root this, a 3 is going to come out and multiply to that. And here a 5 is going to come out and multiply to that. So now we'll have 60 root 2 plus our 18 root 30 minus 
uh, 70 root 2, and then we can combine our root 2s. So 18 root 30 minus 10 root 2. Oh my word. And then this is let's take a little preview. I don't want to make this video too long, but let's just go back and look at these adding and subtracting ones, see if there are any weirdos. I don't think so. We'll leave that maybe for another short video for extra practice. So I will see you on the next one.